Hey everybody, we have a really easy installation today. Um, this is just as typical as it gets. We're going to take this TV, mount it to the wall, hide the wiring inside the wall, put a new outlet behind the TV, make sure it's all nice and clean. Um, I've been doing this for years, so this is going to be a professional style installation. We're going to show you how the pros do it. Really not a lot of skills necessary here, probably like a level one installation, but we're going to show you some tips and tricks so that your installation goes smooth and easy. All right, so the first step, notice we haven't done anything to the wall yet. We haven't put any marks. We haven't cut any holes. There's nothing going on with the wall yet. First thing we're going to do is put the bracket on the TV. Um, all brackets kind of follow the same pattern. They have some type of arms or something that attach to the back of the TV, and then some type of bracket or plate or whatever that attaches to the wall, and the two attach together. So um, this one, Jake had a good question. He said, how do you know which way is up, which way is down? Of course, you can look at your instruction manual. Um, after doing a lot of these, you can tell. This one here has a release mechanism at the bottom. So when I pull this here, that releases the bottom of the TV. I can tilt it and lift the TV up. And then it's got some screws on the top. That'll tighten it down at the top. And then these knobs right here, these knobs control the tightness of the tilt. So you wanna make sure these knobs are facing towards the outside of the TV so that when you put the TV on the wall, you can access these knobs and you can tighten the tilt. So knowing that this is the top, this is the bottom, the knob needs to go on the outside. That's Jake's right there. If I can have Jake hold that. Okay, then all of your mounts should come with something like this too. They all kind of come with a, with a bolt pack like this. You don't need them all. You just pick the ones that you want and um, hopefully they, they have your fit. Sometimes they have them, they're too long or too short. Sometimes you have to go to the hardware store and get the right ones. I know the Samsung TVs usually don't come in these packs because they're too long or too short to come in the packs. They have these little standoff brackets, these little, these little black things right here. Don't use these if you don't have to because if you put these in, they're like shims. If you put these in, whoop, if you put these in, it's gonna make your bracket sit further off the wall. So don't use these unless you have to. So when we pick up our bolts, you should have a pack of washers that come with it. This is the washer that comes with this one. If you have just a regular hole, you don't need a washer. But anytime you have a slot, you gotta put a washer on a slot. So since I have holes at the top and slots at the bottom, it needs washers, right? Now, I can just put a bolt at the top with no washer, but I'm just gonna use washers for all of them. So, we gotta make sure that it's right. So we're gonna count how many, whoops, did I get backwards? I got backwards, sorry dude. Are we right now? Yeah, this one okay. says left. Okay, so now you wanna to try to center this as best you can so that you can adjust it an inch or two after you install it. So we wanna be able to maximize the movement of this TV. Maybe we put it on the wall and we decide we wanna raise it an inch or lower an inch. So you wanna to try to find the maximum amount of play that you can have in both directions. I know that if I go down here too far, I'm hitting the bottom of the TV, so that's going to be my limit. So I'll come up a couple holes, and that gives me a few inches gap, and we'll do that. So yours is going to be different in this particular installation. We're going to do one, two, three, four holes, four holes from the bottom. That's where our first screw's going to so go. In the fifth hole or in the fourth hole? I'm in the fourth hole. With these things finger tight, we kind of want to set them. Um, see if you can see how this thing is wiggling. Maybe you can't, but this thing's wiggling. It's probably got a quarter of an inch up and down. I don't want that that much slop to be in there because when I mount the TV, a quarter inch is going to make the TV look real whack. So I'm going to push down on this bracket, and then I'm going to tighten these bolts. And make sure you tighten them like pretty good. You don't. We're not launching a rocket ship off these things or anything like that. But it should be good to snug. So, okay, with the brackets mounted on the back of the TV, and I've maximized my play so that I can move this thing up and down after the installation's done, if I want to move it and put some fine tuning on it, we're going to put this on. This is the bracket that mounts to the wall. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on right here. Now all the measurements I'm going to make, I'm going to make to this bottom slot. 
hopefully you guys can see there's a slot right here because that's where my bolts are going to go. When I attach this to the wall, my bolts are going to go into the slot. And so really, I need to know where those, that measurement is. So using the top of this table as a reference, on the top of the table, you said to pull this all the way up. Yeah, go ahead and pull all the way up. Good call. We're going to pull that up so that makes it a little more accurate. That's 14 inches from the top of the cabinet to the center of the slot. I'm going to measure next from the bottom of the TV to the top of the counter. Two inches. So it's 14 from the counter to the slot here. From the bottom of the TV, two. 14 minus two is 12. So from the bottom of the TV to the center of this slot is 12 inches. Now, the reason I did it like that is so once I know where the bottom of the TV is going to sit, all I have to do is mark that measurement on the wall, come up 12 inches, and that's where I know where my bracket's going to go. So with that, we can start attaching this plate to the wall. The next step is to make sure that we get our TV in the right location. So um, go ahead, and I, there's nothing really I can tell you guys. Find the center of where you want your TV to go and put a mark on the wall. For us, luckily, the center of the TV is going to be the center of this wall, so we made a mark right here. And then when you guys go to figure out the height of the TV, do not mount them higher than is comfortable to watch. So what that means is mount it as low as possible because at the end of the day, you've got to watch this thing. And if you've never mounted your TV before, you've been watching your TV your whole life with it on top of a cabinet, which is really comfortable for the eye. But now we have the option of lifting this thing super high, but we still want it low because when we're sitting down, the closer that we can get the center of the TV to the center of our eyeballs when we are seated, is going to be the most comfortable watching position. So they're going to replace this cabinet with a little bit taller one in the future. We want to make sure we give them room for that. Um, so we decided to go ahead and go 40 inches to the bottom of the TV. If you remember the measurement we just took from the bottom of the TV to the bolt hole is 12 inches. So that means from the floor to the bolt hole is 52 inches. Um, so I can go ahead and I can kind of just make a pencil mark at 52 inches. I'm just going to go a little bit to the left and right of center. This is my center mark. I don't even know if you guys can see it on camera. That's my center mark. I'm going to go 52 inches right there. Don't worry about being exact just yet. And that one I already made off camera is 52. The next thing I want to do is I want to find the studs. So I've got a pretty good stud finder, but I still don't trust this thing. This thing lies to me all the time. This thing's a liar. It thinks I'm the police. It is a liar. But it's going to give me a rough idea of where the studs are, and then I'm going to use my tweaker to double check. I'll show you guys the whole process. Go ahead and stick it on the wall. You can, you can do the knocking trick to kind of find out roughly where it's at. It goes on the wall. Start sliding to the left. Look at this liar. This thing's lying already. It's lying to me. In front of you guys, it's lying. In front of Jake. In your house, it's lying. No respect. It's saying there's no stud here. I know there's a stud here. So why you don't trust these things? Boom! It's saying that it thinks it's right here. So to confirm it, I'm using a tweaker. Boom! It told me the truth this time. So it says the center's there. I'm going to go to the left a little bit. Still hitting stud. Okay, see how my tweaker goes in all the way right there? No stud there. Go to the right, stud. Okay, so I know the center of this stud, I found both sides of it, is right out there. Let me guys show you guys a tweaker. This is my tweaker. I think this is like a, an eighth inch screwdriver. It's long and this I, I make all my holes like this, okay? So there's one stud. We know that we should be 16 inches on center to the next stud, but framers, they mess up all the time. So let's get Jake. Do us the honor, Jake. Oh boy. Let's see, 16 inches is gonna put us about there. Boom, look at that. Truth is, you don't have to go dead center of the stud. What we don't want is we don't want to hit the side of the stud and then when we put in our lag bolts, it busts out and there's no strength there. So as long as you're pretty close to the center of the stud, you're golden. It doesn't have to be dead center. Just get pretty close. The stud is an inch and a half thick. And the hole that we're going to be putting in there is like 
three sixteens, or sorry, not three sixteens, about three eighths. So you got a ton of space to play with right there. With the center, your studs marked. A lot of you guys might be tempted to go ahead and take this template that you guys were, this is, dude, look how cool that is. They gave you guys a template, throw this in the trash, burn it. Don't ever use this. Don't ever, if I find out you guys use this, I will come to your house. Don't ever use this, ever. So what we're gonna do is I've got the center of my stud marked here. I've got the center of my stud marked there. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in one bolt inside of our bracket. Before you go ahead and bolt your, this is called a lag bolt. Before you put your lag bolt in the wall and bolt that bracket, you need to do a pilot bit. So the way that you do a pilot bit, it's pretty easy. You just take your bolt like this and take your suspected pilot bit and you hold it in front. And you can see how the, you can see threads on both sides of this. That's the right size pilot right there, okay? I'm sure you could look it up, but that's the easiest way to do it. Take the bolt, hold it up to the drill bit, drill bit in front, and you should be able to see the threads on both sides of the drill bit, just like that. That's how you're gonna pilot it. You try to put this in, you're just gonna split the wood. Now we know where the bolt's gonna go. We found the center of the stud. We got 52 inches here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pilot one hole, one hole only. Okay, vacuum as you go, keeps the dust down, makes it a little nice. Here's a tip too. A lot of times when you guys are, um, especially if you're using like an older bit or if you have to go a long ways, when you're drilling in your pilot bit, sometimes it'll get stuck. Don't try to force it. It's just wood, so it really shouldn't get stuck. The reason it gets stuck is because your bit gets clogged. So I've seen guys burn up their bits like that. What you do is you go in until it stops, pull it out, clean off, get that junk off there. It should fall right off and then just go right back in and it should go straight perfect. All right, with that, we're ready to put this bracket on the wall. Remember, we're only doing one bolt right now. So I marked the center of my bracket, and I know the center of the TV. So I just gotta get these centers pretty close to being on top of each other. Don't get crazy, there's a lot of play on the TV when it's on the mount. The TV can slide back and forth several inches almost always. But get it as close as you can, okay? So there's my center, there's the center where TV needs to go. I'm using a lag bolt with a washer because this is a slot. Into the hole. This is gonna be loud, I'm sorry. Boom. Once you have one bolt in, you're ready to start getting the rest of the bolts in, but we're gonna level it first. This is why we're gonna use that paper because if we use that paper, you might be off just an eighth of an inch, and if you're off an eighth of an inch, your bracket's gonna sit crooked. Um, that's why you always kind of put one bolt in first, then go to your level, then drill the rest of your holes. So, perfect. Now, I go over here to where I marked the other center of my other hole. Now I can go ahead and pilot this one in the center. Notice I still haven't gone around and drilled all the holes yet because I'm still trying to make sure that I keep this thing perfectly level. Oh my gosh, the dude, the precision. Just kidding, but it's pretty good. So now that I've got this thing with my two holes, this bracket's not going anywhere, now I can go ahead and finish off the rest of them, which I'll do right now. So if you guys are nervous about breaking your bolts, this is a little mini impact driver. Even though it's small and cute, this will snap them. Um, so just be careful. You can do it by hand if you want, if you want to be careful. Um, shaking the whole wall. This is good. <laughs> shaking the whole wall and I shake this. That means we got a good bite. Sucker's not going anywhere. All right, with, uh, with our bracket on the wall, we're ready to go ahead and start running some wire.